The title of the message today is Knowing and Doing the Will of God. And as God's people, one of the greatest privileges we have, aside from knowing Him, is knowing His will. Knowing His will. He is a self-revealing God who wants us to know His will and to do His will. Well, in fact, when the disciples asked Jesus, Dad, or if I'm not, he's, he's, that's, that's me now, God, Dad, that is all I say. But they, they asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. Do you know what kind of prayer Jesus taught them? You remember, right? You remember that. What kind of prayer did Jesus teach them? How did it start? Our Father. Our Father. Right? Come on, go on. Our Father. Lord in heaven. What did it say? Hallowed be thy name. And it goes on and continues with this verse. Thy kingdom come, Matthew 6, 10. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it is God's desire that His will will be done here on earth. Are you following? So that's actually something that needs to happen. God wants us to do that. Well, in fact, King David said these words in Psalm 143 verse 10. Teach me. Teach me to do Thy will. For Thou art my God. Thy Spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. David wants to do the will of God. He wanted to do the will of God. That's why he said, Lord, please let me know. Teach me how to do it. Teach me what it is. Teach me what they are. I want to know your will. Teach me. And some people, of course, don't want to believe these things that we could know God's will. They don't, some of them don't even, of course, believe in God. They don't believe in the existence of a supreme being. And some people believe that there is a supreme being, but it's very difficult for us to really know His will. Now some people believe that they want to do, or some people want to do God's will, or want to do what is right. But a lot of times they resort to like voodoo kind of knowing, you know, like horoscopes, what else, like psychics, and, and all of those sorts of things. Looking for signs, and palm readers, uh, card readers, and all of those things. Leaves, cats, I mean, we can use anything to figure out what's in our future. What does God want really for my future? Um, and it's not just like the people outside, even people supposedly in God. You know, one of the most fascinating story I've read in the Bible, and I actually get more fascinated with the response of God. How many of you know the story of Gideon? Yeah? Hello, mighty man of valor. I mean, he was like cowering, hiding, okay? He doesn't want the enemy to know, to, to, to see him, and the angel of the Lord appears to him. But it, it, it calls him mighty man of God, mighty man of valor. And then, and then told him about what he's going to do, lead the Israelites in fighting the enemy. And, and when he was about to go to battle, you know what he asked for? He asked for signs. Right? Not only one sign, he asked for two signs. You find it in Judges chapter 6. And it's, it's what's fascinating to me is that in my mind I was going, Lord, um, he asked for two signs. You know, it's like, Lord, I want this fleece to be wet but the ground will not be wet in the morning. And that's what happened. Like the fleece was wet, the ground was slowly dry. Right? And then it was not enough. The next day he goes, Lord, I want this fleece to be dry and the ground around it to be wet. I wanted to really make sure that God spoke to him. But it was, I was wondering because I said, I think the greatest sign was this. An angel of the Lord appeared to him. Before he asked for the sign, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. And that angel of the Lord performed a miracle. Like there was an offering that was given, the angel of the Lord had a staff, touched the rock, and then a fire came out of the rock and consumed that offering. I mean, he performed the miracle, and right after he performed the miracle, Gideon realizes that the angel vanished right before his eyes. I mean, and the Lord spoke to Gideon. I mean, all of these things were going on. All these things were going on. He saw an angel, he saw the miracle of an angel, angel vanished before him, the Lord spoke to him, and after all of those things, he said, Lord, give me a sign. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Wouldn't that be enough of a sign, right? But you know what's more fascinating or what's amazing for me is the love of God for this person. You know why? I got shocked. God gave it. Yeah, I should have gave him a sign. Yeah, I should have gave him a sign. But here's the deal. Whatever God's ways are, there's something that I know about God's word, about His will. God wants us to know His will. And we can know what they are. Well, there's a lot of confusion about the will of God. So I'm going to discuss a little bit of that to you. All right? Okay? So now the first thing I'd like to discuss here, I'm not going to open the Bible like with a big uh, text uh, number of verses, but I'm going to jump. So I'm not going to ask you. You may open your Bible if you want. 
but I'm going to reject all of the verses there to you so we can go a little bit faster, okay? Because these are like one verse after the other. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to speak to you regarding God's will is this. The kinds of God's will. Because there are different kinds of God's will in your life. Um, the career was not here when I, uh, when, when, when I uh, uh, picked him up to go to the Bible study uh, last, uh, the other Tuesday. One of the things we talked about was how people are so used to saying, like, if it's your time, it's your time. There's really nothing you can do about it. If it's your time, it's your time. Whether you're in the Air Force, whether you're in a very dangerous uh, career, whether you're just sitting in your home, if it's your time, it's your time. People believe that, right? People believe that. How many of you believe that? If it's your time, it's your time. There's nothing you can do about it. Your time, your time. So basically, we deal with that because we're talking about God's will. Regarding that, okay? It's God's will for you to end your life at that particular time. So now we can talk about that and some other questions you may have. But we can discuss two kinds of God's will. First, and I'm going to categorize it this way. There are terms that are being used theologically for these, but I'm going to just make it as plain and simple as possible. The first kind of God's will that I'm going to talk about is a God's will or God's will that will surely happen. God's will that will surely happen. Let me just say, this is the kind of God's will we're in no matter what you and I do, no matter what the government does, no matter what the people do, they cannot touch that will of God. What God will, will definitely happen. Okay? And there are scriptures that talk about this truth. Psalm, Proverbs 16.33 says, The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. What are you saying? You throw the dice, but you know what? The number that comes out is not in your control. It's in God's control. Okay? And, oh, all right. Really? So God determines what's going to happen. Right? Proverbs 21 verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water. He turneth it whithersoever he will. Some of you may be asking, and I asked the Lord regarding this, what about the free will of the king? What about the free will of man? Okay, we're not going to discuss that. It's already over free will. But this tells us that somehow the Lord is in control of the heart of the king. And he's in control of where that heart is going to go. Alright? So that's talking about God's will that will happen. It will surely happen happen. Some people refer to that as sovereign will. Okay? Theological word for that is sovereign will. Or will of God based on decree. He decreed it. When He decrees it, so it shall be written, so it shall be done. Okay? Let's breathe it in. You watch Ten Commandments by Charles Hester. So it shall be written, so it shall be done. So that's sovereign will of God. Now here are a few examples of God's sovereign will. The first thing is this. There's a lot of them, but I'll focus on the You just find out a little bit more, but not all, in your Bible studies, in your faith, in your, uh, in your discipleships. But here's is the first one. Here's the first one. What happened to the Lord Jesus, specifically how the rulers and the people went against Him, that was all predestined by God. Okay? Acts 4, 27 and 28 says, For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. That was the sovereign will of God. Okay? Then the second one, another example of a sovereign will of God. The works of God, one of them being of predestination. Now, when I talk about predestination, there's not predestination whether you're going to go to hell or not. Like, Lord, there's literally nothing I could do whether I'm going to hell or not. If you predestined me to go to hell, it's not about it. Predestination is you being conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, or even callings. According to this, it says, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of Him, who worketh all things after the counsel of His own will. Okay? But the next one, one of the sure things that God ordains sovereignly is the salvation of little children. There's nothing that I can do about it. There's nothing that the child can do about it. Children are saved. Children are saved. Okay, those who have not yet come to the age of accountability, they are saved. Matthew 18, 14. Even so, it is not the will of your Father 
It is not the will of your Father, which is in heaven, that one of these little ones should perish. Okay? So there is an assurance that we have from God that God is in control about all things. Okay? Now, there is also the second part, which is God's will that may or may not happen. God's will that may or may not happen. Some theologians call it the permissive will of God. Some refer to it as the command will of God. You know, command of God, that's my will. It doesn't mean we're going to obey it every time. Say a command will of God, a sovereign will of God, or negotiable will of God. I mean to say it could be done or not. Okay, so example of this, or the truth of this, could be found in Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So the Father has a will, but not everybody does what the Father wills. Are you following? So this is what we call the negotiable or permissive or command will of God. Or a will of God that may or may not happen. Okay? And under this category, there are things. Okay? Under this category of the will of God that may or may not happen, there are two subcategories that I'd like to discuss with you. The first one is, there are things that may or may not happen, and they are clearly stated in the Bible, what they are. Okay, this is my will, and it's clearly stated, but we are not sure whether it's going to happen or not. Examples, 1 Timothy 2, 3 to 4. Okay, this is talking about God's will for everyone to be saved. God's will for everyone to be saved. God wants you to be saved. God wants your brothers and sisters, your family members, your loved ones, everybody to be saved. 1 Timothy 2, 3 to 4. Everybody read it together. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. See that? Who will have all men to be saved. Now, is everyone going to be saved? No. Clearly, God wants everyone to be saved. That's very clear in the Bible. 2 Peter 3 9 says that as well. 1 Peter, 2 Peter, I think 2 Peter 3 9. Okay? That He wants all men to be saved. All men to come to repentance, but not everybody's going to be saved. So again, this is clearly revealed will of God, but may or may not happen. This one definitely will happen to some, it will not happen to some. And the second one is God's will for believers, those who are saved, God's will for believers to be sanctified. God's will for believers to be delivered. Sanctification involves deliverance, by the way. If some of you are struggling against something, God wants you delivered from that. If there's a demon oppressing you, God wants you to be delivered from that. Whatever it is that you're struggling with, as it is, that's part of your sanctification, cleansing, being holy. Okay? First Thessalonians, again, it's First Thessalonians 4, 2 to 4. For you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. Okay? This is the will of God, even your sanctification. Okay, I want you to say this to yourself. God wants me God wants to, be to be sanctified. Okay, you know what that sanctified means, right? To be holy. Santi, santo. Yeah. God wants you to be a saint. Truly sanctified, cleansed. Okay? So He wants you to be sanctified, verse 4, that every one of you should know how to possess His vessel in sanctification and honor. Okay? So the first one we said, we said is very clearly revealed in the Scriptures. God wants everybody to be saved. He wants all those saved to be sanctified. And then the next one here is that God's will for us to be always grateful. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, very familiar verses. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything give thanks. God wants you to be thankful in everything. By the way, there's another verse that talks about He wants you to be thankful for everything. In any situation you find yourself in, yes. Does it happen every time? No. He said it's negotiable. Right? Sometimes it happens, sometimes it's not. It depends upon our obedience or not. Okay. okay, so those are the clearly revealed will of God, but they may or may not happen. Some of them, for some of them it does, for some of us it doesn't. And the next one is, these are will of God that are not clearly revealed, that may or may not happen. Okay, I'll give you examples from the Word of God. First Peter, no, Romans 15.32. One example is, does God want me to go to a certain place or not? Okay, does God want me to go there or not? It is an example of the Apostle Paul, Romans 15, 32, that I may come to you 
we joy by the will of God and make with you your return. Yes, I'm going to come to you. God's will, if it's God's will for me to go there, He will open the door. I will come to you. Paul's acknowledging that. Did you notice that? By the will of God, if I come to you. The second part is this, suffering a particular kind of suffering. And I said there's a lot, but I'm just giving you a little bit. Okay? God's will that may or may not happen, this is not too clear. What is that? Suffering a particular kind of suffering. 1 Peter 3.17 For it is better if the will of God be so. I want you to say it. If the will of God be so. If, okay? if, it is better if the will of God be so. That ye suffer for well doing than for evil doing. Now the Bible tells us if you're living a holy life you will suffer. Uh -huh. yeah. But God doesn't tell you you will suffer every suffering there is. Don't go looking for suffering, by the way. No, avoid it as much as you can. Okay. But if God wills that you undergo this suffering, we may not understand it, but if God wills it, then you just have to accept it. Okay? Are you following? Pray through it. Pray through it. God's going to carry you through. And then the next thing I noticed and that I saw was this. It's a specific calling and ministry. Okay. Specific calling and or ministry. They said this may or may not happen. And everybody that God calls responds positively. Okay? So 1 Corinthians 1.1 1, 1, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God. Okay? And Sosthenes is our brother. So Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Well, to be an apostle. So many, all of us have a calling from God. Not everybody does what God wants us to do. Okay, are you following? So these are just examples. This is, there's a lot more. I'm only in my... Probably less than half of what I'm going to preach to you. Okay, but as I said, I want to leave it down there. I just want to assure everybody. Probably they speak to you about, like I said, more than the knowledge that we could gain from all these things. The next topic I was going to discuss to you is about how do we know God's word? How do we know? But more than that, perhaps today, I'd like to just talk to you about, sometimes we get scared about the things that are happening around us. Because honestly, the reason why we face problems sometimes Many of our problems are our own doings, okay? Then our problems are product or result, the consequences of the choices we make or actions we take, decisions we make. But there are things that happen to us beyond our control. Okay, many of us are alarmed about what's going on in the world, right? And, and, and you may apply this to you personally. You have your own world to revolve in. What chaos do you have right now? What are happening in your life that are not in your control? Because it's very easy. If there is something you could do about it, then you may be falling under the permissive will of God, the negotiable will of God. Are you following? Then do the best that you can in those things. If there's something you could do about the situation, then man up. You know, this is, this is the same thing that goes, man up. Okay, move, get your behind up, and then like, get off your behind, okay, and, and do something about it. It's not, it's not God's work if there's something we can do about it. God's given you the strength, God's given us the talent, God's given us the energy, God's given us the power, and, and, and when He's given us the empowerment and enablement, He wants us to utilize that so that we'll rise up to wherever God wants us to be. Are you following? Okay. But there are things that are going on in our lives where you and I don't have control of them. And in those things, God wants you to trust Him. After you've done everything that you can do, God wants you to trust Him and believe that they're all turning out for the best for you. Okay? Are you here with me? Can I just assure you that? Yes. Whatever is happening in your life that you're not in control over, we may not understand how God is going to work. But the assurance that I'm getting from the Word, based on who our God is, and what He's revealed to us, is that when He allows something to happen, permissively, when He allows something to happen, when He permits something to happen, He would not even allow it to happen to you and me, unless He already has a plan to turn it into something so beautiful for your life. So I want you to think about whatever it is that's going on right now and you're facing it. In a sense, the love of God again. Be assured of His love for you that He is working it out for something wonderful. 
And they said, we cannot comprehend it. And then start celebrating. Those of you who had devotion today from the Baylor Grant, he just talking about, they asked me a while ago, Pastor, how come these people, like some of the older people, you know, they saw the temple being built. Some of the older people were weeping, and the younger ones were shouting and praying and adoration to God. Why were they weeping? Were they lonely that the temple is in? No, they were not. They were happy. They were tears of joy that they saw the hand of God perform a miracle. That the restoration of the temple that they so dearly loved is happening again. Something so precious, something they wanted, is finally happening. But one thing that I didn't mention to them a while ago is that they were so engrossed, engrossed with shouting and adoration and they were so, they're weeping. They didn't even see the temple yet. They just laid the foundation. It's like the first rock. They saw something very small. And many were just rejoicing in God. They believed God has done it. And the encouragement I have for you today is this. Yeah. Some people get alarmed because of what society is going on, what America is doing. You don't like the candidates that are being chosen. And it's going to be a chaos here in America. It's going to be a chaos all around the world. And yes, the Bible tells us there will be. Don't even be surprised about it. Yeah. Well, in fact, the Bible tells us, can I, get, can, can I give you this truth, but maybe shocking to some of you, but should not be shocking. The Bible tells us in the last days, evil will increase. Yes. Don't be surprised. If, for example, don't be surprised if more can I was just reading about this yesterday. If, if I didn't know God, I'll be alarmed. What is that? That there's a majority of Californians who are in favor of transvestites using any restroom they want to use. Majority of Californians. I don't know how they found it out. I didn't ask me. I don't know if it's suggested or they just just want to throw it out there so everybody will be in favor. There's more and more about Even if that's true, you're going, it's shocking. You're getting alarmed like what is going on in the world today? That anybody, even if you're not even, if you, for example, if I claim that my tra I, I'm fully dressed like this, but I want, if they said they could use the restroom of their choice. So even if I'm not dressed to be a woman, if I choose to go to a woman's restroom, that's fine. And majority of Californians are in agreement. They said 50 something percent, as opposed to 40 something percent. So you're going, what is going on in the world right now? What is this that evil is growing, evil is winning, evil is triumphing? Now those words are wrong. Evil is increasing does not mean, or does not equate, does not equal to evil is winning. And the reason why we know is because God has given us a revelation of His sovereign will. And what is the revelation of His sovereign will? He has given us the story. In the end of the story, He has given us the end of the book. And the end of the book tells us that that's God's sovereign will, by the way. God's sovereign will is that righteousness will triumph, Jesus will come back, God will reign forever and forever and forever. And you have heard that song, right? It's in the Bible. And He shall reign forever and ever. That's the end of the story. Yes. So that's the sovereign will of God. No one can touch it. Not the government, not the world, not the Antichrist. By the way, the Antichrist is going to rule, he's going to rule and even reign and gather almost all the armies of the world and fight against God. You know what the Bible says? You're going to be defeated. Don't even get alarmed that they're increasing. They're still going to be losers. They're just going to be more losers. Are you following? Amen. That's the sovereign will of God. No, as I said, the sovereign will of God no one will be able to touch you. That's your destiny and my destiny. And that's the destiny that God has for you. He loves you so much and that God who loves you so much is so powerful. He knows what you're going through. If He's allowing that to happen, He knows. And you ought to believe this. He has already planned something for you that that will turn out into something so beautiful. So everybody please stand up this one. Hallelujah. Had time allowed us, and I, would, I, I really want to bring some people. I cut, I cut the message short already. But I just want to... I said, how many of you... If, did the, anybody sick right here right now? Or, you know what, anybody know somebody who's not saved? Probably it's you. Or probably somebody you know. Probably it's you are not even sure really if you're saved or not. We already saw from the Word of God that 
His will is that no one will go to hell. His will is that everybody will be saved. But then it's a conditional will. It's a permissive will. It is a command will. It is something that may happen or may not. But God wants you to be saved. So if you want, if you want that salvation to be real to you, again, the worst thing that could ever happen to you, by the way, to anybody, anyone of us, the worst thing that could ever happen is you come into church Sunday after Sunday, and then when you meet God face to face, He's going to say, go away from me. I don't know you. Because you come every Sunday, He didn't take you seriously. He doesn't want it. He loves you so much. Why are you dying for you? That was serious. I think he deserves more better treatment than a lot of us probably have given a lot of people out there have given. But I want you to just pray this prayer. I'm just going to leave you right now if you have not yet received Jesus and you want this will of God to happen in your life for salvation. Many of you have already heard about this. I don't have to repeat it. So you know what it is. We are sinners. God wants to save us. He has saved us by grace. We just have to humble ourselves and say, Jesus, I want to be seriously related to you. I want to be saved. But I want you to be my Lord. I want to live my life for you. If that's a desire of your heart, go ahead and pray the Spirit. Those of you who have done it before, pray the Spirit together with those doing this for the first time. Just bow your hands, close your eyes. I don't want any distraction. Bow your hands, close your eyes. Pray this prayer all together. Whether you're meeting it, first time in your life, supporting those people praying this for the first time. Say this. Dear God in heaven, I open my heart to you because I want to be saved. I know that I am a sinner. But I also know you can forgive me. You can save me. I invite you Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Please save me from my sins. Cleanse me. Wash me. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for rising again. Because of your victory, I can be saved. And now I know I'm saved. You suffer to live for you. To live for you. That's, a, that's what I really want to do. That's what I really want to do. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen.